Welcome back to Read Along, and today's Read Along, the Adeptus Custodes Codex. Welcome back to Canhammer, everybody, your source for 40k from the Great White North. I have today the read-along of the Custodes Codex, uh, which I'm very excited about. But first, let me show you my haul. So this is Custodes Hall Part 1. Of course, Part 2 is next week when the bikes and the wardens come out. But this is the Part 1 of the haul. Let's check it out. So, uh, first we have the Captain Trajan Valoris. Here he is. I don't think I'm going to be using him in any serious games, but for casual games as well as just for such a cool model, I've picked him up. So here he is. Uh, keep in mind you're going to be seeing all these people on my work in progress series in the next coming weeks as I work through these guys. So I'm not going to be cracking them open here, but uh, coming soon. Next we have a box of Alaris Custodians. These are kind of the Terminator guys, although they all kind of look beefy like terminators but these are the terminator custodies uh the deep striking character hunter guys so might be running a squad or two of these guys in my competitive list there we are we have uh, another box of custodians so i have a total of six possible they come in units of three and we have a unit of custodian guard so uh that i can make a captain and a unit of three and have an extra guy I need one more box. Nobody in Ottawa has a box, so I'm gonna have to get it from somewhere. But anyway, here is my box of custodians. Then I've got the data cards, uh, which I'll crack open a bit later. I've got a second can of gold spray. And I've got some various paints in there. And of course, I have the codex. So we're going to crack over the codex now and do our read along. All right, we are going to crack open this baby. So first thing you notice, of course, is that it's a pretty thin codex. <laughs> That's what happens when you only have three models in your army. But uh, yeah, it's uh, much thinner than any of the other codexes, but it is a codex. So um, we'll get cracking on. So I love the Custodes Fluff. Uh, I do highly recommend people who like Custodes rough Fluff to read. Um, Emperor of Mankind is the Horus Heresy novel about uh, the Emperor and the Custodes fighting in the webway underneath the palace. Excellent book if you like the Horus Heresy era Custodes stories. And then the most recent, uh, I think it was called... Um, um, Chosen of the Emperor or something like that. Uh, it's a book that was written very recently as the 40k story of the Custodes in uh, 40k obviously and how they take part in the Indominus Crusade and how they um, are finally convinced to take part in the war at large against Chaos other than just guarding the Emperor. Um, and uh, focuses a lot on sort of the stigma that sticks with them as having kind of failed the Emperor and um, so a great book as well. So I'm sure that the fluff segment of the book is gonna cover a lot of that. I'll read it later. But uh, what I do wanna see is some alternate paint jobs around here. Because as cool as the gold is, I have seen some other very cool paint jobs. So this is the standard paint job, gold and red. Uh, these guys. All right, so uh, these guys are the Solar Watch, which is sort of bone colored with gold. That looks pretty sick, I gotta say. Then we have the Emissaries Imperatus, uh, which is basically the same but with white robes. Then we got the Dread Host, which is gold but with um, black shoulders. And then we have the Shadow Keepers, which apparently are like the Guardians of the Jails, which are black with gold picked out and red shoulders. I think that looks pretty cool. So I think um, I might be tempted to do either this black scheme or this bone scheme. Um, and I'd rather paint bone on these guys than on Deathwing. <laughs> no offense. Um, but that looks pretty sick. I really like that. Um, so we'll see. 
Um, but those are definitely options. You know, I gotta say, I do not like these models. I think they are just boring and boxy and very not interesting. Compared to the Forge World Dreadnoughts, these things just, oh, so ugly. Um, so what I'm gonna do is make my Forge World Dreadnoughts as contemptors, and when I eventually get my Forge World rules, I'll switch them to that. But ain't no way I am building any of these ugly ass Dreadnoughts. Okay, so we're 56 pages in, and we have the rules out of a total of uh, 80 pages. So two-thirds of it is fluff, which is the usual way that it's divided. All right, here we go. Army of Terra. So, of course, all Adeptes Custodes units have Aegis of the Emperor. And uh, Aegis of the Emperor is a 5-plus Involm. And a new thing, they get a, a six plus funeral pain against mortal wounds in the psychic phase. So a little bit of psychic protection for them. Because uh, of course they have no psychers of their own. Uh, the emperor made them uh, completely non psyker so they would never get corrupted, I guess. So that's Aegis of the Emperor. Everybody has that. Except for the Land Raider, I believe. It's lost its five plus in bone. So Trajan Valoris. Uh, the beefy stat line, 2 plus, 2 plus, so all custodies hit and hit on 2s in combat and shooting. That is very nice. Everybody's just 2 plus across the board. Everybody's strength 5, toughness 5, base. And Trajan Valoris has 7 wounds, 5 attacks with, and everybody has 2 plus save, of course, and the leadership is 10. Uh, he is armed with the Watcher's Axe and the Misericordia. And um, so we've the Misericordia is this kind of extra little dagger. You get to make one attack with it, and it's uh, strength five minus two, one damage. Not too bad. And the axe, of course, uh, is strength ten minus three, d three damage, five attacks. So he's doing quite a bit of damage. And uh, the axe, of course, is rapid fire one, strength five minus one, two damage, bolter. Decent, 24 inch. So he has Aegis. He has a 3 plus Invuln though, so it doesn't really matter. So he has two different saves, 3 plus Invuln and an Aegis. Uh, he gives all Custodies reroll hit rolls and wound rolls of 1 within 6 inches. So he is a combination of a Captain and a Lieutenant in one guy. And once we're battle, he has this Moment Shackle. So the Moment Shackle uh, lets you regain D3 wounds lost that phase. So maybe, so probably useful since he has seven wounds. Um, or at the end of the fight phase, he can attack again, or you can regain up to D3 command points when you spend it on a stratagem, but no more than what you were spent. So maybe not that useful. Um, the shield captain is kind of your standard HQ and literally the only other HQ in this book. He has a custody stat line, only six wounds and nine leadership. He has the Guardian Spear, so the Guardian Spear is a rapid fire one bolter basically, but it's a bolter with minus one AP and does two damage, so it's quite a little bit stronger than a normal bolter. Um, and of course you can arm him with the Spear or the Sentinel Blade and Shield. Uh, Sentinel Blade is um, a strength user, so strength five minus three D3 damage, whereas the Guardian Spear in combat is strength six minus three D3 damage, so it's a little bit stronger. Um, the shield gives them a 3 plus invuln. They have 5 plus as standard, and you're going to see later that in fact they can go up to a 4 plus. So we'll probably maybe run one shield in a, in a unit just to tank some hits. And of course, they can take the Misericordia as an option, which costs them some points. Uh, this guy gives you reroll hit rolls of one, and that's it. So that's his purpose there as an HQ. I'm going to say cheap HQ, as we'll find out later. None of these guys are particularly cheap. So the shield captain, of course, can go in Alaris armor, which boosts his wounds to five and uh, gives him access to this ballistic grenade launcher. Um, also allows him to deep strike. So the Alaris guys can deep strike. And the shield captain can go on the bike, the Dawn Eagle jet bike, which brings his toughness up one to six and his wounds up one to seven, just like all bikers. Now, interestingly, these are jet bikes, but they move the same speed as normal bikes, 14 inches, as opposed to moving like Samael, who has a jet bike, who moves at 16 inches. So they lost two inches off their jet bikes. I guess they're pretty old. 
um, still five attacks and then when you're on the jet bikes you can have these weapons which we'll come to later uh, and of course like with all bikes when they advance they get an auto six instead of rolling all right so your troops are your custodian guard and these can be in units of three up to unit of seven uh, uh ten so that's decent you're not forced to take five of them anymore because that's a lot of points you could take three of them and as you can see they're going to be pretty hard to kill so custodian guards have uh toughness five three wounds as standard with a two plus save and they're going to have a four plus involved in the end so it's pretty hard to kill two plus four plus um with uh, toughness 5, 3 wounds. These guys can take a lot of damage. And they have all these standard weapons, Aegis of the Emperor. So nothing else too special there. But they're your basic troop guys. Now the Wardens are basically these dudes with the robes. And the slightly embellished faceplates and helmets. Um, these guys uh, also come in units of 3. They have uh, one less attack with... So Custodian Guard have three attacks, and the Wardens have four attacks, and the Wardens uh, come as standard with the Castellan Axe. So this has the same bolter as the Spear, but in melee it is Strength 8, minus 2 AP, D3 damage. So one less AP, but Strength 8 as opposed to Strength 6 may be a big difference, uh, depending on what you're trying to kill. So you definitely have options there of taking the spear or the axes. Um, and they have an ability called Binding Oaths. Roll a d6 each time they lose a wound on a 6 of damage they ignored. So they have a 6 plus funeral pain as well. Uh, and that's against all wounds. So not just mortal wounds and psychic phase. So these guys are a little bit harder to kill because they have a 6 plus funeral pain. Wow, so toughness 5, 2 plus save, 4 plus invuln, 6 plus funeral pain. <laughs> That's pretty decent. All right, the Vexilis Praetor is the banner bearer, basically, and he can come in Alaris armor, and uh, or just a standard Praetor. Um, let's go on standard Praetor. So the standard Praetor has uh, five wounds, four attacks. He has the usual weaponry, um, and he has uh, the Custodes Vexilla. So that's the banner. So the banner lets you reroll failed morale tests for all Imperium infantry and bikers within six inches. So that is all Imperium infantry and biker units within six inches of this model. So that is the standard ability that you get, which is awesome. And then you can choose one of the following Vexillas for this model to carry. In addition, so not only do you get that, you also can pick one of these three. You can have the Vexilla Imperius. So Custodes models, except vehicles, add one to attacks characteristics within six inches. So that brings most people up to a base of four attacks. You can have the Vexilla Defensor. Imperium infantry units have a five plus invuln save against range attacks when they're wholly within nine inches of any Praetor. So 9 inch radius is pretty big. That's 18 inch diameter. That's a big circle. Um, and you can fit a lot of infantry in there, especially little guardsmen that now get a 5 plus invuln save. So will we be seeing the cultists, um, not the cultists, will we be seeing conscripts back? You know, 30 conscripts with a 5 plus invuln save against range attacks. It's pretty neat. Um, and this banner guy standing right in the middle. Of course, he's a character. So. Um, that might be a thing. We might see some of these kind of little mini Death Stars with little invuln troopers. And the Vexilla Magnifica, your opponent subtracts one from hit rolls in the shooting phase for targets for attacks that target Custodes units within six inches. So there's your Dark Shroud effect for Custodes, which is excellent. So that makes them even harder to kill. So they're minus one to hit, toughness five. Uh, 2 plus, 4 plus plus, and some of them have feel no pain as well with so many wounds. It just adds to it for sure. Um, so options there. The banner guy has options to, to be splashed into Imperium as well. So uh, I think we're, you're, you will see that, I'm pretty sure. And I'm already thinking up some interesting lists. So when he's in the Terminator armor, he gets the extra wound. 
um, and uh, that's about it. He otherwise and the deep strike. He otherwise has access to the same banners. So, so Alars uh, Custodians. These are the Terminators. They have uh, f uh, four attacks instead of three, and four wounds instead of three. Um, to be a Terminator for them, otherwise makes no difference in terms of the saves because they already have two plus four plus plus. But it allows them to deep strike. Uh, and they have access to the same weapons except they can have this Ballistus Grenade Launcher which is a 12 inch range Assault D3 Strength 4 only but it's minus 3 AP 1 damage so that's uh, not too bad when you see what else they can do. So they have Aegis, they have Deep Strike, and they have Slayers of Tyrants. When models in this unit pile in and consolidate, they can move up to 3 inches towards the nearest enemy character, even if it's not the nearest enemy model, as long as they finish this move within 1 in inch of N enemy unit. So there you go. So they are character hunters. Uh, so the Venerable Dreadnought is unchanged, uh, basically still has a 5 plus Invuln, has the 6 plus Phenol Pain, and has access to the uh, Carriage Pattern, Assault Cannon, multi melta and Combat Weapons, so he's not changed from the Index. Alright, Virtus Praetors. So Virtus Praetors are the Bikers, which are fast attack. Oh man, these models are so sweet. I cannot wait till next week when I can get some of these duders. Such awesome models. Awesome, awesome. Anyway, uh, and definitely going to magnetize these lances because you try putting that in a foam. Uh, so Virtus Praetors, of course, 14 inch move, uh, toughness 6, 4 wounds, 4 attacks. Uh, unit of 3 up to a uh, unit of 10 in total. They have Hurricane Bolters as stock, which is pretty sweet. Uh, and then otherwise you can change it to a salvo launcher um, which can fire either this melta missile which is basically a melta that can reroll uh, wounds against vehicles one shot or d3 um, flak burst which is against flyers so plus one to hit against flyers and um, uh, string seven minus one d3 damage now the only issue is these these two weapons are heavy and so when you move these guys, and you almost certainly will move these guys, they're going to be only hitting on threes. Ooh, only hitting on threes. But uh, that is a penalty for having heavy weapons. Of course, you get plus one again if you're shooting flyers. But, you know, uh, so I think probably stick to hurricane bolters and let these guys just kill chaff. Their melee weapon is the interceptor lance. This giant spear thing up there. The Interceptor Lance gives you plus one strength, so it goes to strength six, minus three, D3 damage, uh, which I think is pretty much the same as the Guardian Spear. Yeah, Guardian Spear is um, strength six, minus three, D3 damage. Yeah, so it's basically a Guardian Spear. Um, however, it allows you to reroll failed wound rolls if you charged, because these guys are like, Bruh. so it's a garden spear with reroll failed wound rolls if you charged. And they have the Misericordia, and they auto advance six inches. So that is the flyers. I think these guys are going to be so awesome. And the land raider. So the land raider is unchanged. The only difference is, of course that um, this is a, a venerable land raider which it was before you have to take the uh, las cannons you have no other weapon options but the twin heavy bolter and the twin las cannons um, you can add a hunter kilometer or storm boulder but you can't swatch pit for any other form of land raider and it has lost its invuln save which doesn't come in that often for land raiders because they have two plus invulns um, but um, yeah, they, uh, the trend right now is to not give vehicles invuln saves. You know, that's why Azure got nerfed and everything, but uh, so it doesn't have that anymore. It still has the um, Feel No Pain and it has Power and Machine Spirit like a normal Land Raider. It can transport five Custodes models, which is weird because you can't even fit Primaris in a Land Raider. Go figure. So um, I don't think we're going to be seeing a lot of Land Raiders, to be honest. Um, but it is the only source of long-range firepower in this codex with the last cannons, if you're going to run them as a pure force. All right, that's it. That is all the models in this codex. Oh, check out this picture. 
two bloodthirsters against some ultramarines, Gilliman, and a bunch of custodies. <laughs> That's awesome. It's a great picture. All right, Auric Mortals. So, if you have an Adeptus Custodes Detachment, then you get these extra rules. So, if your army is Battleforged, all infantry and bikers have Sworn Guardians and Emperor's Chosen. Emperor's Chosen is Invuln Save is improved by 1 to a max of 3 plus. So, this makes all your Custodians in a Custodes Detachment 4 plus Invuln, which is awesome. And Sworn Guardians gives you Obsec. But this, this gives it to all infantry and bikers. So basically, other than land raiders and uh, dreadnoughts, everybody in your army is objective secured, which is sweet. I don't know, because this is a low model count army, obviously. I don't know if it's going to really come in handy that often, but if you need it at the last minute, it definitely could be useful. And this is where the money is, really, the stratagems. Now... There's a lot of stratagems here. For such a small codex, there are three pages of stratagems, uh, which is impressive. Now, you're going to need CP, and you're not going to be running a double battalion of custodies due to points. So, uh, really, if you want to have plenty of CP to do stratagems, you're going to have to ally in Marines for a battalion, and for scouts probably, and or guard for a cheap guard battalion for 180 points, you could get three CP, as well as 30 infantry bodies and a couple of commanders to help you wrap, bubble wrap and hold objectives. So I think that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing, which is to run it with some catechins, just for the CP and for the screen, and then run a bit of artillery uh, or Dark Angels Plasma, and then run some deep striking custodians with some bikes. I think that is my ultimate plan, but we'll see how the points add up. So let's see, from Golden Light they come. So this is the Deep Strike Stratagem. Uh, you can Deep Strike an Infantry, Biker, or Dreadnought for 1 CP, or 2 units for 3 CP. So that's pretty good. Uh, that lets you drop in uh, the, the big HQ guy, Valoris. That lets you drop in your banner without paying the points for a Terminator. Uh, lets you drop in Dreadnoughts, obviously, and uh, lets you drop in a bike unit. So that is a pretty good stratagem. Unflinching. When this, uh, when your opponent's charge phase adopts its custodies, when this unit fires Overwatch, they require they hit on a five plus for Overwatch. Not bad. So unleash the lines for two CP. You take your Alaris unit and you split them into individual models, each a separate unit, which I think is interesting. Um, I'm going to have to play test this one to see how good it is. It could be very good because they are ob obsec, but you'd have to have some objectives pretty close together. Individually, they can still wreck because of all the number of attacks they have, but um, they do become more vulnerable. I don't know. Um, I think obviously this might be cool if you had like a unit of 10 guys, they deep strike in and then you play this um, oh, at the start of your movement phase. Okay, so the next turn you'd have to play it and now you have 10 units of one Alaris Terminator each, which might be handy, but um, in very interesting stratagem. Strategically, you have to think about it. Tangle foot grenade, so use this at your opponent's movement or charge phase. Choose an enemy unit within 12 inches of an infantry unit from your army uh, and roll a d6 your opponent must reduce that unit's movement or charge distance by the result unless they are fly that's sweet you don't even have to roll a four up it happens you just roll you just pay your cp and you roll the dice to see how many inches they get reduced that could save you from a charge ever vigilant for two cp uh, after your opponent sets up a unit this is the interceptor one basically Vexilla Teleport Homer. Use this strategy at the end of your movement phase when you set up a Teleporting Adeptus Custodes unit at the end of that phase. You can set it up wholly within 6 inches of a Vexillus Praetor uh, and more than 3 inches from enemy models. Wow. Okay, so you have to be within 6 inches of the Praetor and 3 inches away from enemies, but that means you have a 3 inch charge. Interesting. And your Vexilla Praetor must have been on the field already.
interesting. 3 CP though, so you know if you're going to be doing these shenanigans, you're going to need a source of CP. You can also run a guard brigade for about 400 points, that gets you a lot of CP. Um, open the vault, so this gives you extra relics, basically that's the relic one. Avatars of the Empire, um, so um, you can use this unit's leadership characteristic for morale for friendly Imperium units. Shoulder the mantle. Oh, this is an interesting one. So for one CP, when your warlord dies, you can use this CP and just make someone else your warlord and generate a new warlord trait. And they don't get Slay the Warlord points. That's pretty good just for one CP. <laughs> pretty good. But it has to be a shield captain. So if they killed your only shield captain, then you're screwed. Uh, network machine spirits. So your land raiders, if they're within six inches of each other, don't suffer any to hit penalties for for moving or dark shrouds or anything that's decent if you're going to run that many land raiders otherwise not that decent indomitable guardians 1 cp uh after uh an enemy unit that charged has fought um you can fight next with the custodius unit if it's within three inches of an objective okay so if you're holding an objective it's a 1 cp interrupt basically not bad Inspire Fear. Use this stratagem at the beginning of the morale phase. Two of us want to adapt this custodies units. Opponents add one to morale test for enemy units within three inches. Might be useful. Sentinel Storm. Use this stratagem at the end of the sh shooting phase. Opponent shooting phase. Choose one of your units that is within one inches of an enemy mod. Your unit can choose, can shoot with its Sentinel Blades. Okay, so that's just if you're running Sentinel Blades. Probably you won't be. Burst Missile. Uh, choose Virtus Praetor's unit, uh, if, if they all fire flak burst missiles, you can reroll failed wounds. Okay, so useful if you're running flak burst. Spark of Divinity, uh, when an enemy psyker manifests a psychic power within 12 inches of a custodian's infantry or biker unit, you can deny the witch for that unit as if it were a psyker. Sweet. Now that's not quite as good as the Black Templar 4 plus deny stratagem, which would have been nice, but this does give you a chance to deny a spell um, if you need it for one cp plant the vexilla um, as long as your praetor didn't move he just plants the banner and it adds six inches um, to the range of your banner which is pretty decent for a cp if you really need that range piercing strike for one cp uh, when your unit is chosen to attack in the fight phase, add one to wound rolls for the guardian spears until the end of the phase. That is very useful. And it's just custodies unit, not just the guardians. So anybody's running spears could, for CP, add one to wound rolls. Inescapable Vengeance for 2 CP. Use the stratagem for Alaris custodians. They can target enemy characters with their attacks, even if they're not the closest enemy model. Now, if you think about it, that's pretty sweet because they have 24 inch super crazy bolters, basically. You know, rapid fire one, 24 inch, strength, uh, strength five, strength five. Let's check. Guardian spear. Strength 4. So Strength 4 only, which is the only downside. But, you know, characters sometimes are not that tough. But minus 1 and 2 damage. So you might kill some characters like that for 2 CP. Wisdom of the Ancients, your Dreadnought gives me roll hit rolls. That's the same as the Space Marines one. Castellan Strike for 1 CP. Use this stratagem when you select one of your, your custodian units to fight. As long as more than one model is attacking with an axe, they all target the same unit. Improve the AP of the axe to minus 3. So that's pretty good because they're normally strength 8 but only minus 2. So that turns a 5 up save into a 6 up save for like a predator or something. That's pretty sweet for a CP. Concussion grenades. Use this stratagem when choosing a unit of the Lars custodians to attack until the end of the phase. The ballistic grenade launchers have AP 0. But infantry's hit by these attacks are stunned. They cannot fire overwatch and minus 1 to hit rolls. Not too bad. Although I'd probably rather just kill them. Eyes of the Emperor. Uh, when you generate a tactical objective, you can discard it immediately and generate a new one for a CP. Interesting. Uh, Victor of the Blood Games. Use this stratagem when you set up a custodian's character from your army during deployment. You can reroll one hit roll, one wound roll, or one save roll for this model each turn for 2 CP. That is pretty good. 
Reroll a hit roll, a wound roll, or a save roll. Interesting. So rerolling wound is nice, uh, but to reroll a save is also very nice. So two plus rerolling or four plus plus rerolling, that's pretty good. Very good for two CP at the beginning of the game. Even in death. So this is the one where the character gets to fight again for 2 CP when they die. Avenge the Fallen. Use the stratagem when you select Custodes unit to attack. In the fight phase, increase the character's attack by 1. For each model from that unit that was slain this turn. Hmm, okay. So that depends if you're running a big 10-man unit and how many models get slain every turn, which is not going to be that many, hopefully. Otherwise, you've got bigger problems. So maybe not a super useful stratagem. Bringers of the Justice, Emperor's Justice, for 1 CP, when a Custodes unit is chosen to attack, each time you make a hit roll of 6+, plus, you get, oh, this is exploding 6s against Heretics or 4+, plus against Black Legion. Okay, so a lot of combat stratagems in here, obviously. Stooping Dive, okay, so for 3 CP, uh, Adeptus Custodes Biker unit that is within 12 inches of an enemy unit, you can declare a charge with that unit as if it were your charge phase. If successful, that unit fights before all other enemies for 3 CP. So it kind of gives you a counter charge for bikers if they're within 12, which is pretty cool, but you still got to make your charge roll. And that's it. So overall, the stratagems are... Um, very interesting. You're definitely going to need a source of CP if you want to use these stratagems. I can already think of using this one that gives your guy rerolls. Uh, definitely going to be using the biker counter charge one if it comes up. Um, definitely think about using these custodians and uh, Alaris guys and splitting them up. You want to deep strike people to keep them off the board. Um, maybe extra relic. I mean, there's a lot of stratagems that you might want to use here really got to have them cp but overall a good book doesn't seem overpowered the only way custodians is going to work is if they're really hard to kill because there's so few models and they seem like they are really hard to kill um people have been doing math on how many like las guns or bolters it takes to kill one guard and it's a lot that's the only way that they're going to be competitive because they don't have the bodies to be competitive otherwise and ask gray knights um if you're so elite, you gotta be tough. All right, relics of Terra. Let's see. Hmm. Gatekeeper, guardian spear. It becomes rapid fire three. Wow, six shots. Whoa. For uh, same uh, and melee. So same. Uh, other than becoming rapid fire three, has the same stats. Overwatch attacks hit on three plus. Wow, overwatches on 3+, plus, shooting 6 shots. That's pretty nice. Raiment of Sorrows. Roll a d6 each time a friendly infantry or biker model is destroyed within 600 of the bearer. Before removing the model as a casualty on a 4+, plus, they can shoot or fight again. One shoot with one's weapons or make a single attack. Yeah. There you go. So that's basically your banner, like your death banner, like the Space Marines have. Eagle's Eye, improve invuln saves to by 1 to a max of 3+. plus. So that's not bad, but uh, yep, so 3+, plus invuln is always good. Auric Aquilas for bikers. This model has a 3+, plus invulnerable save, and reroll fail charges. So if you have a shield captain on a bike, there you go. 3+, plus invuln and reroll charges. Praetorian Plate for the Terminator, so the Alaris only. Choose a friendly Imperium character at the end of your opponent's charge phase. If there is an enemy model within one inch of that character, you remove the dude wearing this plate from the battlefield and you deep strike them right in within three inches of that character and within one inch of an enemy model. The bear is not considered to have charged. <laughs> Interesting. So it's like a bodyguard, teleport bodyguard thing, which is cool. The Veiled Blade. Model with a sentinel blade. Basically... There it is. Emperor, this is a lot of relics for a small codex. Look at this, two pages of relics. Emperor's Light model with the Misericordia. Uh, Misericordia becomes minus two, one damage. Each time the bear fights, it makes one additional attack. In addition, add one to any morale tests. Okay, not that useful. Uh, Wrath and Jealous. Model with the Vexilla Magnifica. That's the minus one to hit. 
banner. The Wrath Angelus replaces it. It loses the Custodes Vexilla ability, so it doesn't reroll failed morale tests. Instead, friendly Imperium infantry and biker units within six inches of the bearer automatically pass morale tests. And once per battle, if the bearer does not move, you can roll a d6 for each unit, friend or four, within six. Subtract one from the result if the unit being rolled for is a character or two if it's being rolled for as a Ductus Custodes on a four plus the unit being rolled for suffers d3 mortal wounds. So like the banner kind of like boom, does like a mortal wound AOE, but it can hit your own people as well. Um, okay, well here is a banner that gives you auto pass morale within six inch, six inch, within six inch, not wholly within. So there you go. There's your conscripts, uh, 120 conscripts that have uh, five plus invuln and uh, auto pass morale how do you like them apples <laughs> do we see conscripts back who knows um auric shackles your opponent subtracts one from attacks characteristics of enemy characters within six inches of the bear pretty sweet and you get d3 victory points if you slay the warlord obliteratum with the ballistus grenade launcher Basically, it's a strength 10 minus 4 D3 damage uh, grenade launcher. <laughs> Pretty sick. Assault 1. Fulminaris Aggressor. This is a model with the Vexilla Defensor. So this is the other banner that gives the invuln save. It loses that. Instead, um, uh, Inf Imperium Infantry and Bikers within 6 inches auto pass morale and it gets this uh, profile so an 8 inch assault d6 flamer basically a minus 4 strength 4 minus 1 AP flamer and melee is plus 2 strength minus 1 1 ok interesting not as good as the other one Castellan's Mark. If the bear is on the battlefield at the beginning of the game, but before the first turn, you can rem if the bearer is on the battlefield at the beginning of the game, but before the first turn, you can remove them and up to one friendly custodian unit within six inches of them and set them up again following the mission rules. You must set them up on the battlefield. Interesting. That's a redeploy. And Faith Absolute. Model with a Vexilla Magnifica only. Uh, the Faith Absolute replaces it, loses the Vexilla ability. Instead, Imperium Infantry and Bikers auto pass morale, and the bear can attempt to deny psychic power in each psychic phase. Not bad. Not bad at all. Probably these two special banners are the best ones. Warlord Traits. So, uh, Valoris. Uh, okay, let's go through them first. So, Champion of the Imperium. Uh, friendly. Uh, basically, all friendly custodian units except for uh, land raiders within 12 inches of your warlord at the start of your opponent's charge phase can make heroic intervention this phase just like characters. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, peerless warrior. Each time you make a hit roll of 6+, plus, you can immediately make an extra attack. Okay, superior creation, 5+, plus phenol pain. Um, impregnable mind warlord can attempt to deny the witch once in each of your opponent's psychic phase of this as if he was a psychic and adds one okay that's decent radiant mantle opponent subtracts one from hit rolls that target your warlord and emperor's champion reroll the dice for damage inflicted by warlord okay um and trajan veloris has champions of the imperium as standard Okay, not overwhelmingly awesome Warlord traits, which bodes well because in my army I was need to use the Warlord trait on the Imperial Guard commander, so not missing too much there. Okay, points. Here's the point values. So the Terminators are 70 points base, and the normal Custodian Guards are 40, and the Custodian Wardens are 49. So in units of three, so it's 210 points base for the Terminator, three people. It's 120 points for three model guard unit. And the Wardens is more than that, almost 150 points. So these guys are expensive. So if you run a, want to run a basic battalion, oh, let's do the HQs first, I guess. Shield Captain's 110, in Terminator 130, and on the bike is 150. Um, Dreadnoughts are 130, Land Raiders is too expensive. The Biker Dudes are 80 base. 
Um, and the Vexilla is 80 base as well, 100 in Determinator Armor. Okay, and then for everybody, if you want Guardian Spears, that's 12 points. Um, the Axes are 14 points. And Sentinel Blades are 9 points. Um, the Misericordia is an extra 4 points. I'm not sure it's worth it, to be honest. The Interceptor Lance is free, though. And Storm Shields, as per usual. And those banners you pay for, 20 bucks for the minus 1 to hit. Uh, no, 20 bucks for the 5 plus Invuln banner. 50, bu 50 points for the Imperious. Which one is the Imperious? Uh, that's, oh, add one to the attack characteristics, that's 50 points, and the minus one to hit is 30 points, which makes your Vexilla 110 points. So, if you want to run a standard battalion, at the minimum, you're going to need probably a shield captain for 110. The, uh, Vexilla would be nice for 110 minimum. And so that's 220 already, and then you need three troop units, so you would have to run... Three custodian guard units of three, 120. So that's 220 plus 330. So that's already 600 points for a basic battalion. Not too bad, but it's pretty expensive. Valoris is 250 points. He is pretty expensive. Uh, so yeah. And then we already went through these uh, these weapon costs. Ballista's Grade 8 Launcher is free. It's the only thing that's free in the book. <laughs> Alright, and tactical objectives. Okay, guys. That is the Codex Adeptus Custodes. Uh, read along. Super excited to start making some lists. Gonna make a pure Custodes army. See how that goes. And then gonna start coming up with crazy wacky ideas of putting Guard in there. Maybe some Dark Angels with some Plasma. Mixing it with some other armies. Uh and then uh, start painting and assembling all these guys. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that read-along. Stay tuned for lots of work in progress uh, showing all the new Custodes models being built, assembled, and painted. If you like this video, please click on the like button below. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, please click on the can hammer symbol right there. And if you really want to support what we do here on the channel, please consider supporting us on patreon.com forward slash can hammer by clicking on that link right there. Thank you for watching everybody and we'll see you next time.